Welcome back new and existing subscribers on this Wednesday, February 24th. And there's a ton of news to chew on. This video may well be longer than I anticipated. So if you're wondering why Foxy Games UK is rendered in 4K this week, well, my Elgato 4K60 card malfunctioned, so I'm waiting for replacement. So it's uh, 1080p until then. And I never thought I'd ever say this, but in the best possible way, a lot of those Foxy Games UK chickens are finally coming home to roost. I'm feeling pretty relaxed for today's video where we'll be talking about PlayStation VR 2, tomorrow's highly anticipated state of play, PS5 supply issues slowly easing up, PlayStation IP going to PC, PlayStation Studio acquisition rumors intensify, and Sony Japan hint at the possibility of a new PlayStation portable gaming device, and more juicy nuggets, starting with some smaller tidbits, courtesy of PlayStationUniverse.com. So Gran Turismo 7 has been officially delayed on PlayStation 5 until 2022 due to a number of pandemic issues that had arisen during development. In a statement provided to GQ, Sony stated, and I quote, Gran Turismo 7 has been impacted by COVID-related production challenges and therefore will shift from 2021 to 2022. With the ongoing pandemic, it's a dynamic and changing situation and some critical aspects of game production have been slowed over the past several months. We'll share more specifics on Gran Turismo 7's release date when available. Honestly, I saw this one coming. I tweeted as much just last month that delays were coming on the PlayStation front, indeed across the board, Xbox, Nintendo, it's Gran Turismo for crying out loud. Has this series ever launched without delay? Hmm. In other news, remember, oh, probably going back a little over a year, perhaps from January 2020, when I tweeted Sony Interactive Entertainment were negotiating at least one studio acquisition and were internally shuffling things around with the view to form another studio to handle, yes, PS5 game development. This was all pre-COVID. Well, this is still very much entrenched in rumoured territory, but one of those studios could well be Blue Point Games, and I'm saying could be, I'm not saying it is, before the detractors run to the hills with it, this is not confirmation. Comprende? Now I'm a little sick of other outlets or individuals leaks being ascribed to Foxy Games UK when all I'm doing, much like every other game news channel or outlet, is reporting said info to my subscribers and my viewers. So with that being said, here's the full story as published by PSU.com. So rumours about Sony acquiring Remake Masters Bluepoint Games have started gathering steam once again, and this time the administrator over at uh, prominent games forum Reset Era has chimed in on the matter. But first, let's go back a bit. Last year, Reset Era forum member Marsipan Rupin posted that a deal between Sony and Bluepoint Games had been finalised. Unfortunately, this caused a bit of an uproar on the forums with people, yes, people calling for the user's head to be banned as nothing on the supposed acquisition had come to fruition. Hmm, sounds familiar to me. Now, moderator Transistor has offered their two cents on the matter and really backed up the previous user's claims that an acquisition is indeed on the cards. So Transistor posted, I want to say how disappointed in this community I am. The amount of hostility in this thread is unwarranted. This community needs to be better about how it treats one another. As for Marsipan Rupan, he's not going to get banned, so just chill out. There's been smoke from multiple sources about Bluepoint being acquired by Sony, and it's pretty much going to happen. It's just a matter of when. I had faith enough that it was going to happen, so I would never ban them in the first place. I don't like actual ban bets and don't tend to entertain them. So Bluepoint Games is best known for its various remasters and remakes, having worked on the likes of Metal Gear Solid, the HD Collection, Shadow of the Colossus, and PS5 exclusive Demon's Souls. And this is the price, yeah, honestly, I know, I've paid it. This is the price you pay for being early. Being almost a year early in some cases, two years, then the pandemic sets everything back. And in the meantime, months and months of people abusing you, calling you out because the official announcement has yet to come. Thankfully, a lot of the stuff I put out there, far as I know, is still happening. In fact, something huge related to PlayStation Studios is going to be announced this year, finally. 
Look, I'm under no illusions here. I know exactly who the doubters and detractors are. And when these things are announced, the schmutz will probably be, really probably be hiding under some rock with their tail between their legs. Consummate saps. Now, I think the game community needs its own Dr. Fauci because we desperately need a vaccine to counter this new strain of the virus called Moron 21. I jest, but it's why I, I'm slightly hesitant to now exercise extreme caution when I'm asked questions or asked to elaborate on my tweets, even other tweets and rumours which have nothing to do with me, like when people claimed and still claim to this day that I was the one who put out the PS5 is 13.3 T-flops, <laughs> when in fact, just like everyone else, I merely shared it. The culprit who put out that 13.3 T-flops PS5 rumour was an individual named Tommy Fisher. I believe they were on recent era or Reddit, one of them. But morons who do not watch my video just decided to run with it and call me out on every rumor tweet I put out since that time. Now it's probably best not to ascribe other people's information or BS speculation to the wrong parties. Indeed, these Muppets are literally ruining it for others. I used to enjoy sharing info that I was fortunate enough to receive, but I decided to stop for a while because I consistently notice that when things are announced, people seem to forget where they originated from, where they first heard it, and somebody else is either given or takes credit. And that's how it is, unfortunately. It's just not worth my hassle. So I have a lot of empathy for this particular Reset Era user who had calls to exile him to gaming's wilderness. Moving on. Yes, moving on to news that has been officially announced. Let's talk about Sony's Jim Ryan, intimating that more PlayStation games are heading to PC. Notably, Days Gone. First and foremost, why is this huge news? We all knew PlayStation exclusives that really had ran its course on Sony's own hardware would eventually end up on PC. It makes financial sense when all the software sales of any particular PS4 exclusive has been exhausted. I remember taking so much flack from my own subscribers and others when I put out a video regarding more and more PS exclusives will go to PC. And now I'm noticing an awful lot of wishful sentiment regarding day and date PlayStation slash PC releases. Not gonna happen. It'll mostly be PS4 titles that, as I say, have ran its course in sales and likely PC gamers will get PS5 titles at least 24 to 36 months post original release. Don't people understand that Sony, Sony Interactive Entertainment, have always strived to create games that are system sellers. They need to move units. They don't have Game Pass. You know, games that move PlayStation consoles. Let's not get too carried away with this announcement. Shout out to Mooch who tweeted the following, and I quote, Having two to three year old games going to really PC from PlayStation is good business by PlayStation. This is what I've said Xbox should have done versus day and date. PlayStation is double dipping and making money. Also, PlayStation fans get the game first on their console. After two years, who cares where it lands? <laughs> Exacto mundo. Moving on to the officially announced PlayStation VR 2, something I and others were covering two years or more ago. I recall early 2020, Sony tried to downplay the rumored successor to PlayStation VR. Obviously, yeah, it still had PS4 VR units to sell, but you know, in this industry, you kind of have to be economical with the truth. But here it is, it's real and it's happening. Sourced via a GQ interview with Sony's Jim Ryan, CEO and PlayStation president, now, Ryan answered a number of questions during the said GQ interview, and when asked about PS5 shortages, potential game delays, PlayStation VR, and more, Ryan said, We're working as hard as we possibly can, and you may have read that we sold 4.5 million PS5s at the end of December 2020. That's more than we did PS4s in 2013, and that was a high watermark for PlayStation generations. So, with everything in the world throughout last year, we feel like that was a fairly decent number. One in four of those who have bought a PlayStation 5 do not have a PS4, and those around half are new to the PlayStation network. So it's really nice that we're able to bring people in from outside. Now I know there were people who wanted a PS5 and couldn't find one. We're very sorry about that. And obviously grateful that demand has been as strong as it is. 
Now Ryan went on to say, Yeah, we're feeling pretty good about Returnal, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and Horizon Forbidden West and you know, there are two approaches to this. You can either hold the date and put out the game irrespective of quality or you can ship it when it's right. We've always taken the latter approach. There have been some fairly high profile instances of publishers trying the former approach. No mention of uh, God of War Ragnarok there and perhaps a shot at CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk. Now since the interview we've learned that Gran Turismo 7 yeah, has been delayed unfortunately and God of War Ragnarok could very well be next for delay. As for PlayStation VR 2, Jim Ryan confirmed PlayStation VR 2 will be a completely new format, a new VR format for PS5. PlayStation has considered VR as a strategic opportunity and big innovation story. We think there are two themes that you're going to see. Us capturing the technological progress uh, that has really taken place since the VR system came to market and a considerable amount of lessons learned because the present system was our first one and changes will be things like moving to a very easy single cord setup with better performance and obviously higher resolution. This is one of many other learning things that we've really taken into account. Dev kits are about to go out. So Sony are pushing VR forward. Oculus even said, welcome player number two. And maybe, just maybe, it may also be re-entering the portable gaming market, at least in Japan. Now I actually put out a video regarding a possible PSP2 or Vita successor or PS5 compa really companion device years ago. And more recently, earlier this month. This latest info comes by way of T3.com. Rumors of a Sony PSP 5G device have been circulating for years now, going back as far as mid-2018. Right now, the Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite are completely unchecked in the handheld gaming console market and running away with it in terms of sales with more than 70 million consoles sold. Now, despite the commercial failure of Sony's last foray into the realm of handheld consoles with the PlayStation Vita nowhere near matching the popularity of the original PlayStation Portable and Sony bigwigs really actively pouring cold water on the possibility of a PlayStation Vita 2, there has remained whispers that Sony is in fact currently engaged in a deep cover style operation to produce a new handheld gaming console. Sony is now perfectly positioned to release a new handheld gaming device, the likes of which the world has never seen before, one that is made feasible by 5G technology. The PSP 5G tantalizingly glimpsed into the whips of rumor smoke is a cloud-based game streaming console that uses Wi-Fi and 5G connectivity to actively stream games on the fly, either from a gamer's game library or from a Netflix for game service like PlayStation Now. Now this system would not rely on expensive local internal hardware like the costly PlayStation Vita but would instead really just consist of a screen, controls and a Wi-Fi slash 5G modem. There would be no need for cartridge slots or physical games to be produced at all and games would be able to pick up the system cheaper as they would not be buying proprietary games for the system as the console's power was remote. AAA games released on PS5 could simply be streamed directly to the PSP 5G with cloud saves meaning gamers could swap between between PS5 and PSP 5G seamlessly. So Sony already has an entire gaming ecosystem already built, it's already got a massive library of games including retro games from the past and really handheld consoles and a deep mastery of 5G technology and even still dabbles in the smartphone market which involves producing a handheld device with 5G modem and screen. T3 goes on to write, they hope to hear more about both the Nintendo Switch Pro and the PlayStation Portable 5G soon, as the concept of playing AAA games on the go is truly mouthwatering. Just imagine booting up Horizon Forbidden West on PS5, playing for a few hours, and then picking it up, really carrying on the adventure the next day on a PSP 5G on a commute to work. Tantalizing. And finally, before we go, get ready for the first PlayStation State of Play of 2021, but certainly not the last. 10 games over 30 minutes. That's potentially 3 minutes per game in screen time, though it probably won't be divvied up so equally. But what can we expect? 
Well, the smart money is on new details and trailers for Kana, Bridge of Spirits and God of War Ragnarok. Whether it will or will not come out in 2021 is anyone's guess right now. You've got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is a sure bet for this year. Horizon Zero Dawn 2, Sony are confident that's still on track. And you've got Returnal due very soon, though I'm not quite sold on it just yet. And then there's new indie, new AA, AAA projects and third party partners, etc. And perhaps a few surprises we weren't expecting. One can only hope. Just keep those expectations in check and you'll probably enjoy it more. Remember, there's only so much you can realistically squeeze into 30 minutes. Though what say you? Go ahead, sound off, share your thoughts and opinions on today's video because that unfortunately brings us to the end. But let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments. And for all your gaming needs, rumors, plausible speculation, news, yes, hit the like button. Yes, of course, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Help us reach more like-minded gamers. So sure, please feel free to share the video. Consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon. You'll find a link in the video's description. Thank you for that extra support. But that concludes our time together for today. Thanks for hanging out. I'm looking forward to State of Play tomorrow. Yeah, but I'm not expecting anything too, you know, over the moon. But uh, yeah, until next time, play games, not corporations.